Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. This is Tanya with Memory Lane Keepsakes and I am going to show you guys a card tutorial. This is one of the cards that I chose to show you guys how I design. This card here was actually featured in another video. Um, this is one of the cards that one of my subscribers won on one of my giveaways. So I want to take you guys through the process and show you how I designed this card. So thank you for joining me today. All right, so this card, I actually used the Harvest Mouth, Harvest Mouse stamp set from My Favorite Things. And some of the different things that I used to do this card was these different card stocks here. And so these are all the pieces you're going to need. You're going to need this small piece right here. And as you see, it has a bit of a stitching, double stitching. And I actually used this die to do the double stitching. And then I actually have this white piece of cardstock, and I use this die right here, the biggest um, double stitching die. It's my rectangle. Then I also have this red cardstock here, and then this blue card that's actually been scored, and as well as um, I use my bone folder to fold it. And as you see, you can open it up. So those are the four pieces you're gonna need to get started. Alright, so now I'm going to show you another tool that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using my Stamp Perfect today. And as I go through to make this card, I'll show you guys the other um, different materials that you're going to need to be able to go ahead and do this card as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set these other pieces to the side for now. Okay, and I am going to lay out my card. Alright, so the first piece I want to use here, I'm going to position them all. All right, so I'm trying to position all these different stamps right now on how I did this card. And that's basically where I pretty much had everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this right now. Press down so that way it can adhere to the Stamp Perfect. What I love about the Stamp Perfect is the fact if you don't get a great impression the first time you stamp down, you can go ahead and try it again. That's the whole point of having a Stamp Perfect and it is just awesome. All right, so as you see, it's stuck on the um, the Stamp Perfect frame right there so far. So what I'm going to do is I am going to be using this Ranger or Carpet ink. And this is a great ink to use because your images come out jet black and it's also waterproof. So I'm going to go ahead and get these images stamped here. And I want to go ahead and go over this really really good and I hate when I get some of the ink right here on the thing because sometimes I feel like it don't always want to come off but it's coming right off so you can just rub that on off or you can use a baby wipe um, to just clean your stamp perfect or whatever it is that you have that you can use to do that so I like to go over this several times here and so now I feel like I got a good amount of ink on there what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this closed And I'm going to stamp my image down. And I'm just going to press it down right here to make sure I got in a good place right here. And I'm going to lift up and just see. And I think that was really good that first time there. So I'm really happy with that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to go ahead and close 
this up right for now and I'm gonna wipe off my little mouses here and get the ink off of those And if you also have a, um, a stamp cleaning tool, you can just use that to kind of go over your stamps real fast and just kind of clean those off really quick. So now I'm going to go ahead and lift those up because I'm pretty much done with those for now. So those are going to be put back. All right. Okay, so now I am actually going to go ahead and I created my own little mask because guys, I'm keeping this card flat today. I'm not actually going to lift any um, anything up on this card except for my sentiment just a little bit to give it a little bit of lift. So what I'm doing right here, I'm actually going to put down um, a mask right here for my pumpkins. And so... This right here, I can actually, I made these masks by stamping it just on regular um, sticky notes. And so as you see, it has a little bit of ink on there already. And then I just stuck some little tape behind it until I can get me some masking tape. So this is my own little variation thing that I did. So if you're trying to try this technique out and see if that's something you want to invest in, this is a good way to do it. So I basically pre-stamped these images and pre-cut them down. And the reason why I'm doing this is because these things, right, these pumpkins here are in the forefront. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place um, these pumpkins in another place so that way I can have them some in the background. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually stamp one on the side right here because I'm done with the small pumpkin so I don't need that one anymore. So I'm actually going to go ahead and stamp a pumpkin right here off to the side. So I am going to stamp right here. So I'm going to place this here. And I'm going to close my stamp perfect again. And I am going to go ahead and ink this up. So that way I can have another impression for. Keep getting ink on here. Let's see here. There we go. I like to go ahead and do it while it's wet because it's easy to clean off when you um, just rub it with your finger or use your cleaning tool. So then we're just going to stamp another image right there on the front. And then what you're going to see is that one's going to be right there. And then I'm going to actually um, stamp another image. And we're going to actually place it this on top here. So this one right here is on top and I'm going to move this image and I am actually going to place it right here off to the side. So I can have multiple pumpkins, some in the forefront, some in the front. So I'm actually going to ink that up yet again. This is a way that you can create other um, images and you can have some in the forefront and some in the background without having to um, have layers and layers of different images. So I love this technique. This is something I've been wanting to get into for a long time and I actually tried it and I fell in love with this, this technique. So as you see, I'm just pressing it on down there and I'm going to just clean off my stamp real quick here. I'm only going to do four for this demonstration. I'm going to clean inside this right here and get this pumpkin clean as much as possible. Okay. Alright, so now I also went ahead and created my mask for my my mice so I'm going to show you guys that and I went ahead and did this so that way I could show you guys the technique that I'm going to be doing so what I've done here is I've actually placed this here so I'm going to put my mask on top of this and I'm going to show you guys why I'm doing this so that's on top of that now and as you see I just got tape on the back just simple masking tape that way when I lift it up it doesn't mess up my um 
my actual card. It doesn't peel up on the card stock and it'll still be nice. Um, you might see me keep pressing down. That's the reason why I need to go ahead and get that other masking tape. I'm still looking into the one I really want to get. And so now I'm going to remove these magnets here and take this out of my stamping perfect tool. And I'm actually going to go ahead and show you guys my process. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys the background on how I got that beautiful background. And what I use, I started off with my Broken China for my Distress Outside ink. So I'm going to be using this first. So let me go ahead and just go ahead and get some of that on there. So we're going to be doing the sky effect. And so what I'm going to be doing is basically doing it like this. And I love this color. This Broken China is absolutely gorgeous. Really pretty color. And so it's real easy. Just use your blending tool and you just go over it as much as you want. So this is just to create the sky is basically what I'm doing. And a little bit more of that. I like to get in those corners really nice too. All right, so I have that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch up my colors. And I'm actually going to go to Fossilized Amber. Fossilized Amber is the next color I'm going to be using. And Fossilized Amber, I'm going to use it as in the sky sunset scene has pretty much changed and so i love the way these colors look together They're just really beautiful so i'm actually going to be going over this so that way in my background it doesn't affect anything i have here so it's going to go over the top as you see And I really love this technique. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And as you see that, try to lift up a little bit there. And then here's my other pumpkin that I didn't put down. So we can go ahead and do that now. No big deal because I didn't even make it down that far yet. All right, so that way when I come over that side, it doesn't hit that. All right, so we're going to go over this part here. I love the way these colors blend. It's so easy. It's just so relaxing to be able to do this. Really nice. And then you just see I'm just going over the, um, my masking, the stamping I've already done. And I'm actually going to create a grass scene in just a moment here. So I got my yellow down, my fossilized amber. It's like a golden yellow. So I'm done with that. So now I'm actually going to go ahead and go to my Lucky Clover is what I'm going to be using for my grass color. So this Lucky Clover is really, really nice as well. I love these Distress Outsides. They are so much fun to work with and you can create some beautiful different um, designs and creations with them. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just going to go ahead and just bring this on down right here. And as you see, I'm just going to get in between here, create like a whoosh in there. Okay. So I'm going to go in here and get some green. This Lucky Clover is absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful green. So we're going to go in there and get some of that and get some more on here. And you see me holding down my little mask that I created, which you can do that. 
and that way it doesn't lift up on you too even though I got the tape back there it's just also good to have that extra support and I'm gonna get a little bit closer into this mouse right here these little mouse are just so adorable I love how they are just carrying little things and getting ready for the harvest it's just I like the stamp set it's really really nice All right, so we got that. All right, so we have that done. So that's my um, Lucky Clover for my grass there. And now I use Candid Apple to give me some different tones for my sky. So I went back in and what I did is I created like, I created like a wishing look to it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on there and basically what I did is I kind of just went in there and kind of created like a swish. As you see, I'm kind of just, just swishing in there. So we don't want too much, but just enough to create like a swishing. I love that because it gives another look when the sky changes colors, when the sun is setting. I just love the way that effect looks. I mean, it's just a beautiful beautiful I love looking at the sky when it changed different colors different times of the day when it sets and different things and I like to create different looks of that so that's what I'm doing here so that's a little bit there and a little bit more in here so I'm basically just taking the end of this and I'm just kind of going at an angle to create that effect Okay, so that's it for that. And then also, what I'm going to do now, since I'm done with that, I am going to go ahead and lift up my mask and show you guys what I'm left with. So as you see, the mask and stuff have been colored with the Distress Art size as I did my background. So as I take this off, it's going to reveal just the areas that I stamped. And you can hang on to these and maybe use them about two or three good times. And I'm going to set those off to the side. And that's pretty much what I have. So you guys see that? Isn't that awesome? That is just really cool. I love this technique. Just really awesome. So that's basically what I have so far. So that's my background. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to go ahead and start coloring. And these are pretty much the colors that I'm going to be using. These are all the Spectrum Noir markers and the colors that I'm using, all the letters and um, numbers and stuff right here if you guys are curious about the colors that I'm using here. So you can see that there. And so I'm first going to go ahead and I'm going to start with coloring my mouse. And the color that I'm going to be doing for my mouse is my IG2. Um, my IG2 is more of like a gray color. So I'm going to be using that and you want to find the side that has the tilt because this is the tip side and then there is a broad side. So you can use either side but I choose to use the tip side because I find it to be a little bit more easier. So these are the Spectrum Awards and I'm going to go just go ahead and color my mouse. Nothing special about my coloring. I just choose what I like to use as far as high vision things. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go in here and just do that. and just get some color down and this is just so relaxing I love to do this like especially when you've been able to stamp your own images out and just do what you do it's just like the best thing ever so I'm just going to add this on in here and get that in there right and then also I'm going to get that little hand right there it's really small but you got to get that hand in there and then I'm also going to go ahead and go around the ear a little bit here and then I'm going to come back in with another color and show you guys how I make that work okay and 
And if you hear my Yorkie pool in the back, that's because we have some neighbors that's having a gathering today. And it's real noisy because there's a lot of kids from the party outside just having themselves a good old time. And my Yorkie pool doesn't like the fact that they're too close to the house. So I'm going to get this tail right here, too. I'm going to come back over here and get that tail. All right. So he's protecting the house. The little dolls are hilarious to me because... They're so big in their minds, but they're so small, but have a big heart, you know? So I have this right here. Get this all down. All right, so this is what I have. I'm going to go ahead and just color this ear on in and show you guys what I'm going to do with that. All right, so that does it for this one here. Okay, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and get that ear. And so, what I went ahead and did is I basically just went in. And when I did this, look how it creates that effect in that ear. It's just really nice. I love the way that looks. Not too much, just real soft. And this color here was the PP3 that I'm using. And I'm going to create it also right here. Cause it needs it to give that highlight so there we go put a bit in there okay and then I'm also going to go ahead and get the pants done here I pretty much kept this um the colors the same as far as um how I did the um, the little outfits on the um, the mouse or the mice here, um, simply because I didn't want the car to have too much going on. So I basically went with a um, TB5 to do the pants for this one here, and I really like this co these colors because it actually has your eye um, go in different places here. But I'm gonna show you how you can I'll take something that looks similar and switch it up too. So as you're gonna see, I'm gonna jump over here and do the sweater on this mice in the same color, since I already have this color out. So, get this down right here. And I normally spend a whole lot more time doing my cars, but I'm just trying to speed it up to show you guys my process of basically what I did to um, definitely get this car process done here. And then I also um, use this right here. This color here is DR3. And DR3, I did this in the vest color here real pretty red this is gorgeous I love the way this pops it's like the little mice workers trying to gather all the the food for the harvest all right so that's that and then I went ahead and did the little the little boots or you can also even do it gray and just keep their feet open if you wanted to. But I just wanted to create little boots on it. So I just went ahead and added that on in. And I did the trousers of this mouse right here in the same color. So this is this here. And then I went in with this blue right here, which is TB3. This is a really, really light blue. So I went ahead and did the vest of this one here. And then I also got this little area here. And that's part of the vest. And then I did this sweater here on this mouse in this color instead of the royal blue like on the other side And 
did the boots in the same below for this one here. Okay. Then I went in and I did my basket. Um, my basket full of cherries right here. This right here turned out really, really nice. So I went ahead and I did this process here for, for my basket. And this is um, TN7 is what I'm using. So that's for this one here. And I just pretty much just added the color on in. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to go back and highlight that in a little bit better. So this process, it's a lot going on with this card, but I absolutely love how I use all the different um, pieces and enhance the different colors. And while I have this out, I'm going to go ahead and do these stems of these pumpkins. And this one here is sitting on top of this one, but that's fine because you do see some pumpkins at the pumpkin patch sitting on top. Even though it was supposed to have been off to the side, it's no harm, no fouls. You know, you can pretty much do your card any kind of way you want. And I actually kind of like it stacked. That's really neat because you do find some pumpkins that may be stacked sometimes. And I also did... This one here, which is OR1, that's what I use to color the pumpkins in. And that is not the side I want to use, but you can use it if you choose to. So, this is what my pumpkins, really nice. So now we have these other pumpkins here that I'm going to just color on them. So it's just adding color. That's all you're basically doing. You can color any way you want to. You can do your shading if you choose to. And if you just want to keep it simple like I'm doing here, feel free to do what you know what you feel comfortable with. So again, I'm just doing this really fast. I usually spend more time, like I said before, but I'm just trying to demonstrate to show you guys my process of what I pretty much did. So this is pretty much the process here. So that's what got my pumpkins done there. And then I also went ahead and I added some, um, the same one, DR3, to do the cherries. So I went ahead and just did the dots on in there and then dotted all the cherries up. And that's how I got the cherries. So this is the process on how I got all my coloring done. And I am so happy with how it turned out so far. So, I'm going to come back and show you guys how I'm going to add some more detail to this card. So, stay tuned. And thank you so much for joining me for this first part. Thank you for watching.